It's time for Animals and Airwaves, brought to you by the Muskoka Animal Hospital. And here is your host, Leanne McIndoo. Hello, everyone, and thank you for listening to this edition of Animals and Airwaves. My guest today is Michael Sizer, a freelance videographer by trade who works regularly on commercial events as a camera operator. Michael has, in the last year, discovered a love for filmmaking and the power it has to change minds through storytelling. The first documentary that Michael worked on was Saving Dinah, produced by Animal Alliance of Canada. Michael's second foray into filmmaking is his current project, Cow Save the Documentary. Welcome, Michael. Good morning. How are you? I'm great, thanks. How about you? Well, thanks, Okay, first of all, as a documentary filmmaker, what are your goals? Well, um, I can answer that question in two ways. In, in a broad way, uh, I want to bring issues of social dust, justice uh, to the forefront of people's attention. Um, right now, I'm focusing on animal rights because it's one of my uh, personal stronger concerns. So, so right now, I'm keep uh, with the Cow Save documentary. I'm trying to help spread the awareness that, that animal subjugation and exploitation, which is quite common in an all, all parts of our life, um, really shouldn't be happening at all, in my opinion. Okay. So. Uh-oh. Uh, so- First of all, let's discuss your first film, Saving Dinah. What is the premise of that? Saving Dinah actually wasn't a documentary. It was it was written by Stephen Best, um, not the philosopher Stephen Best in the States, but Stephen Best from Animal Eyes of Canada. It's actually a, a, a drama film, um, and it's it's a story about a woman named Caroline who is running for local mayor um, in Whitby, Ontario. Um, who it, it's, it's fictional. Mm-hmm. And in the process of her campaign, her family dog gets stolen. And she's a very career-driven woman. And initially, um, it's just sort of, well, it's just a family dog and there are more important things. But she goes through a transformation when she's, as she realizes how much the, the dog Dinah meant to her, um, she goes through a transformation and, and starts to focus much more on, on finding her dog than anything else, her campaign or whatever. And so the film was sort of written with the intention of helping people understand that that animals are very important, they have lives of their own, and that everyone, you don't don't have to be a hero to to respect the lives of animals. Anyone can sort of rise to the occasion and do what's what's right, which is uh, treat animals with respect when they deserve it. That's so, and that's that that will be released, I believe, within the coming months, if I understand correctly. Well, what is Toronto Cow Save? And how did you come to be involved with this organization? Yeah. So Toronto Cow Save is sort of um, an offshoot of what first started a couple of years ago, Toronto Pig Save. Um, and they're essentially the same thing, only dealing with obviously with different farm animals. So I, I don't know exactly what it was. About three years ago, Anita Kreins, um, who lives down near the lakeshore in Toronto, she was walking, she would walk her dog, uh, Mr. Bean, along the lakeshore, and she would pass, um, uh, Stratton Street, which, where there's a, there's a, there's an abattoir there. Mm-hmm. Pigs are taken, truckloads of pigs are taken every day. And so she would see these trucks, these trucks of pigs coming in, being transported into the slaughterhouse, and it was really, really bothering her. So she decided that she would start, um, a nonviolent protest. So she started, she, she wrote up a sign, um, I don't know what the original sign said that she first wrote, something to the effect of honk if you love pigs or something like that. Mm-hmm. And she would stand at the corner and she would just hold up her sign and she would try to get people to to sort of support her in saying that these these pigs shouldn't be transported into slaughter the way they're being, being done. And through social media and through a little bit of just the fact that she was out there being seen in exposure, um, some people started joining her. And so over the course of a couple of years, um, it, it's grown quite a bit now. On Facebook, on the Toronto Pig Save uh, site, there are about 2,000 followers, um, and they hold vigils. Um, so that what they do is they go out and they do their, their, their protests or vigils, as they call them, um, twice a week on Lakeshore. And an average vigil might have a dozen uh, attendees. So it's just people going out, um, and and what they do is not only do they hold signs, but when the when the when the trucks stop at the corner at the light, waiting to make their turn to the end of the abattoir, a lot of the uh, a lot of the vigil attendees will actually come up to the truck 
and, and reach in and, and touch the pigs and try to show them a little bit of mercy or a little bit of friendship, um, sort of a little bit of last minute, uh, I guess, enjoyment out of life, if you will, before, uh, before it's terminated. And then CalSafe was just an offshoot of that. So back in November, um, they started doing the same thing in front of, uh, a, at, uh, there are a couple of cow slaughterhouses in Toronto at nearly sort of Keel and St. Clair area. Um, they're right across the road from each other. And so now once a week, they hold vigils, uh, between, on the road between those two slaughterhouses. So it's essentially the same, the same thing, but only for cows now as well. well. I understand there's also, um, Toronto Chicken Save in the works. Yes. Yeah, there is a Toronto Chicken Save in the works. Um, it hasn't, it hasn't, it's not off the ground yet. Um, it will be. I don't know exactly when. Um, the, there's a, the, well, our, obviously there are several chicken slaughterhouses in the Toronto area. Um, one of them is actually near the, not too far at all. It's only about two blocks away from where the, the cow slaughterhouses are. Um, and they do about 65,000 chickens a day. Um, and so since it's only a couple of blocks away from cow save, they'll probably start combining the vigils probably one after the other, I expect, once it's off the ground. But right now, just because cow save is really, um, there's a lot going on with cow save. Um, they're, they're trying to make a lot of, uh, they're planning a lot of different things for cow safe. So for example, because they'd like ultimately to see animal slaughter ended completely, um, one of the things they're working on right now, and it's taking up a lot of Anita's time, is creating a just transition program for slaughterhouse workers. So, so for example, when, when we go to the vigils and we stand in front of the slaughterhouses, um, you know, maybe protest isn't the right word because it probably gives the wrong idea. It's not people chanting and yelling at the workers or at the truck drivers. Um, it's, it's, it's what they call outreach. And what they do is they bring pamphlets. They, they, they bring up, um, pamphlets that have all this information on how you can go vegan. Um, what are different things, that, what are different ways that you should think of animals, uh, as opposed to the more conventional, you know, they're used for mm-hmm. that sort of thing. It's, so they try to promote education. What they, they literally do is they actually interact with the workers. And over the course of the six months or so that it's been going, they've actually started building some relationships to the point where some of the, some of the workers actually know them on a personal, first name basis. So when they come out on break or come out on lunch, they'll actually come and say, hey, hey how are you guys doing this week? What's up? And, 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 now, usually the workers don't really want to talk about veganism or ending right. slaughter, but, but the, the, the people who are at the vigil, um, they always make sure that they get the conversation back to the focus, which is, so have you put out your resume for another job yet? Because don't forget, we can help you. We have, we're working on just transition programs. So if you want a different job, we'll do whatever we can to help you find that. And so, so Anita is working on this just transition program that involves, uh, working with a social worker and working with someone who specializes in, in finding, uh, employment for people with, uh, I don't want to say lower skill sets, but people who don't have a lot of education on their resume, unfortunately, because that's what most of the people that work in the slaughterhouses, of course, not all of them, but most of the people who work in slaughterhouses tend to have, um, a, a resume that's not, you know, mm-hmm. not, not the most impressive. Mm-hmm. A lot of them, unfortunately, are recent immigrants and they didn't have schooling opportunity where they came from. And so that's why Anita is working to help them for their own sakes and for the sake of the animals. So if they want another job, we'll do what we can to find you another job. A, so that you're no longer killing, and B, so that hopefully you can actually have a more satisfying day at work than, than what you're doing now. And so because Anita is so busy with that right now, I say Anita, Anita and all the people mm-hmm. helping her, that is, mm-hmm. um, the chicken save has, has taken a bit of a back seat, but it, it, it will, once t- a little more time frees up, it, it will be, uh, it will become more high priority. What has been the response from the workers and from the public? Um, it, it's mixed. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it really seems to depend on the individual, uh, so, for example, on any given day, um, and, it, and it varies, it also depends on, on whether you're talking pig safe or cow safe because the environments are so different. So if, if it's a pig safe vigil on Lakeshore, um, there's a lot of drive-by traffic because it's right at the main, well, because Lakeshore Drive, it's, you know, a lot of traffic. Right. And so there, um, you'll get a lot of people honking in support. You'll also get a lot of people uh, making slurs that'll, that'll, that'll drive by and say, I love bacon. Mm-hmm. Trying to get people riled, right? Yeah, I've heard that. And it really varies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, 
And but what they because there are some people who who really want to push the buttons of the protesters. Um, one of the things that that sort of the group in general has come to to learn is that it's very important to keep your cool. Uh, we've really seen because we we we, we have. All of us are guilty. Each one of us has lost his or her cool once or twice before. Or they, you know, they push the right button and they make you angry, and then you say something you regret afterward, and you realize, you know, that didn't help anybody. Now, now they just think we're jerks. Um, so, so we find that if you if you're really positive and if you really don't let them get you worked up, usually what happens the majority of the time is they'll come to settle down and have a real conversation with you. Um, and we get everything from, well, I'm sorry, but you guys are crazy, and, and, and I just think this is nuts, to, um, you know, I I hadn't thought of it that way before, and, you know, maybe I'll I'll think about it, to some people, we've had some people definitely um, say, well, maybe I should go vegetarian. And in fact, at Take Save, they actually had one of the truck delivery drivers uh, go vegetarian. So he, I, I don't know now, I haven't seen him in a while, so I don't know if he's still actually doing the job of delivering things to the slaughterhouse, but he did tell us he was going vegetarian. Well, um, now, at the cow safe, mm-hmm. it's a little different because that's where we're actually interacting with the workers themselves because we can actually, because we're right in front of the slaughterhouses mm-hmm. directly. Um, and again, it's the same thing. It's a, it's, an, it's, a, it's, a, it's an array of responses, but more and more, the, pos- the responses are positive um, because they're developing relationships, uh, as I said, even on a first-name basis with some of them. Um, they're coming to uh, they're coming to see us less as those crazy animal rights people, and uh, more and more as people who have a different way of looking at it than we do. Well, you're personalizing it. You're making you know you're putting a face to the name or the or the organization. So that's a good thing. Um, Michael, exactly. we have to we have to take a break right now, but we'll be back in a few minutes. We're talking to Michael Great. Sizer from Toronto Pig Safe or I'm sorry, Toronto Cow Safe. Great pet health doesn't just happen. It takes excellent nutrition, regular exercise, and lots of love. Muskoka Animal Hospital has been serving the people and pets of Muskoka since 2005. Muskoka Animal Hospital believes that planning for your pet's wellness rather than illness is one of the fundamental roles that a veterinarian hospital should fill, offering a wide variety of medical, diagnostic, surgical, and preventative health care. Muskoka Animal Hospital, 96 Haynes Road, Huntsville. Sears Huntsville is your hometown source for all Sears products. Come and see your extensive assortment of major appliances. If you're looking for laundry equipment, fridges, ranges, dishwashers, we have it. Also on display are beds, TVs, and electronics, outdoor equipment, and an assortment of seasonal merchandise. If Sears carries it, we sell it. Sears Huntsville Hometown Store, 96 Haynes Road, independently owned and operated by Annette and Kenneth Donald. Briggs Pumps and Plumbing Limited have been solving plumbing issues since 1950. Three generations have been providing honest, fast, and friendly service throughout the Muskoka area. And they stand by their work. Repairs, installations, complete UV systems, water filtration, water softeners, well, septic, and naturally, pumps. For all your plumbing needs, call a professional you can trust. Briggs Pumps and Plumbing Limited, 788-2894. When you think plumbing... You think Briggs. You're listening to Animals and Airwaves. Brought to you by the Muskoka Animal Hospital. And here is your host, Leanne McIndoo. Hello, everyone. Today, our guest is Michael Sizer from Toronto Cow Save. And we're discussing um, the um, um, premise behind Toronto Cow Save and the documentary that's being made. Uh, Michael, what... Or, I'm sorry, who is Dr. Amy Fitzgerald and what have been her findings? Dr. Fitzgerald um, is a professor at the University of Water, uh, pardon me, not Waterloo, at, at Windsor, pardon me. And a couple of years ago, she and a couple of co authors uh, did a research paper uh, that was published in the journal um, regarding the relationship between um, the violent crimes and the presence of a slaughterhouse in the neighborhood. Um, it was, I think, from what I understand, the idea was sparked behind a quote by Upton Sinclair. He, he wrote The Jungle, mm-hmm. of course, in the early 1900s, which is Slaughterhouse, the book about Slaughterhouse. And he said that, um, uh, bear with me, I, I don't remember it verbatim, but the, ascent, the essence of his quote was, um, 
the people whose job it is to crack heads during the daytime have a tendency to practice on their friends and families at night. So I, I guess this sparked, uh, she decided, she and her colleagues decided to test, to test this, the, the quote and see if it was actually true. And so they collected data, mostly taken in the U.S., um, and they found that, that the core, not just correlation, but in fact the causational uh, relationship between the presence of a slaughterhouse uh, in a vicinity and an increased rate in not only violent crime, violent crime, but specifically violent sexual crimes. Um, so obviously rape and that sort of thing, unfortunately. Um, and and the, the paper is quite thorough uh, because, of course, initially one would have a tendency to say, well, okay, but is it really because they're slaughterhouses or, you know, is it because that there are a lot of, uh, you know, obviously people blamed it on, on, on racist things. Like they said, well, is it because a lot of immigrants work at slaughterhouses or is it really because um, they're just low-paid people and those are the kind of people they are? But they really went very thoroughly and, and, and compared all those factors against other industries and found that it was specifically slaughterhouse workers uh, that were that had a high rate of violent crimes, unfortunately. And so, the closer you live, in fact, to an abattoir, um, the more likely or the higher your risk of being a victim of a violent sex crime. So that was the conclusion of the paper. And so she'll, mm -hmm. she'll be interviewed in the film. I'm looking forward to meeting with her. Yes, she sounds very interesting, and it sounds like quite an interesting study. So, first, mm -hmm. um, how can people get more information on your films? and um, all the different saves. Right. Well, the, the best way to get information on the saves is, is to go on Facebook. So if you just go on Facebook mm -hmm. and do a search of cow save or pig save, you'll find that you'll find the groups and just join the group. And that's, that's the great, best way to get tapped in because Anita and Paul, who is also very active in the group myself, as well as just other group members are always posting things, uh, obviously including information on when the next video will be and that sort of thing. Um, regarding the movie, um, I'm in the middle of a fundraising campaign right now. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Indiegogo. It's a, it's a sort of a crowdfunding site. If you go to Indiegogo, uh, it's I-N-D-I-D, -E, Gogo, G-O-G-O, and you just look up Kelsey, you'll find the, the, the campaign, my fundraising campaign online there. Um, and then I've also just, just last week created a Kelsey movie, uh, Facebook page. So, you, you, so you can find information. Uh, Facebook is probably the best place. Okay. I'll just type in Cal State or type in Patriot. Now, just to touch on the philosophy of the film, what is the philosophy? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that because um, the, the film is not, even though it's definitely an amorous film, and there's no doubt about it, 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 it is ultimately um, trying to spread awareness so that Slaughters, that's the slaughter ends. That, that's my ultimate goal, no doubt about that. But it's, um, there's more to it than that because what the film really is going to explore is how, um, the group is actively, uh, trying to engage Gandhian principles in their campaigns. So, um, I know Anita and Paul don't like it when I say this, unfortunately, but they're, 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 they're academics. They have, they have, uh, Pretty, pretty heavy backgrounds in, in, uh, philosophy, both mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. And, well, I need to talk, uh, political science as well. But anyhow, so they both have a lot of, uh, a lot of reading behind them in nonviolent protest. Uh, Anita is working on a book project about Leo Tolstoy, who is a big influence on Gandhi. Um, and Paul teaches, uh, in the theology, de theology department at U, U of T. And so they're bringing with them with their deep understanding of nonviolent protest principles and trying to put them into real action on the ground through CalSafe and through through uh, Pixie. And that's what the film really is, is going to explore. I'm hoping that even if someone watches the film and for some reason is not convinced that cows shouldn't be slaughtered, even if, even if I fail to show them that you shouldn't be eating cows mm -hmm. uh, or any other animal for that matter, I hope that they can at least walk away still with an enlightened understanding of nonviolent protest. So I hope that they can say, well, you know what? I don't buy it for cows, but I'm going to take up a human rights issue. Um, and because I, I now understand how nonviolence is so effective as a protest method. If I can at least succeed at that, then I've done half my job, in my opinion. Well, I think that's a great idea because it's 
would be an oxymoron if you had, you know, if you didn't have that kind of philosophy when you're trying to save animals. Exactly. Yeah, I, one of the one of the things that Dr. King said that I often remind myself is that you, know, you can't achieve justice through injustice. So, like, and it, I think what he meant was that you know, there's violence that's not acceptable no matter what the answer is or what the reason is. And so, and so I think that's uh, I think that's why that's why I'm following. That's why I'm doing the movie on, on cow safe and I'm on the saving itself because I really believe that their their methods are uh, are pretty spot on as far as being in line with with uh, with nonviolence. What are the rewards for you as an animal activist? Um, that's a good question. Um, one of the things, one of the things that I often, and I really very often hear people say is that, uh, you know, I, someone often will say to me, I really respect what you guys do with your vigils. I think it's great that you guys can go out there and sort of show dignity to the animals for a few minutes before they're, they're taken away. But I just couldn't do it. I, I wouldn't be able to stand there and look, look at those poor animals. It would just hurt me too much. I, mm-hmm. I'd be a crying ball of mess. Mm-hmm. And what I want people to know, what, what actually what Cal State and Pig State have to, what we have to start doing somehow is spreading the understanding that Yes, it's true. Most people who come for the first time do cry. Most people who, who care about the animals and muster up the courage to show up and look at them in the eye and watch them get driven away knowing that they'll be killed. Mm-hmm. It, it is hard. It hurts the first time. But almost everyone will tell you that there's an ensuing um, feeling of empowerment. You, 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 afterward, you feel like, hey, you know what? I couldn't stop it, but at least I gave them a moment of, of respect. And I'm here showing support for the other people who, who, who disagree with what's happening. And we're forcing other people to recognize that there are people who disagree with this. You know, mm-hmm. if, if it's one person, if it, when it was just Anita, um, there were probably a lot more people saying, wow, is she ever a crazy nut standing there trying to protest against the flower industry than when there are a dozen. When there are a dozen, suddenly it looks a little more credible. Mm-hmm. And so the more and more people that show up, the, the greater sense of solidarity that builds. Um, we even have one one super wonderful protester. Her name is Pia. Um, she said that she just comes to the vigils to support the other protesters. Um, just she feels that that's her role. That other people are, are have things to offer that she that she feels she can't, but she can, um, you know, she can support them. Which I think is actually she's, she's being humble because she's actually one of our better outreach people. She's really good at talking to the the workers. So so anyway, my point is that. It really is empowering you, you, to, to, to go to the vigils. Like a lot of people will say, and I've, I've heard this a lot too, oh, you're not really accomplishing anything. You're just, you're just sitting there and watching them get killed. But that's not true. I disagree. It's, it's like, um, I think it's like a, a, a Paul York, who's in the film, uh, he uses an analogy of like a, a constant stream of, of water drops on a stone that the, right. you know, the first and second right. drop appear to make no difference at all. Mm-hmm. But over, enough time it changes the shape of the stone and i think that's the effect that vigils have is that you know when we first arrived at cow save they were, they were in fact somewhat hostile um but now some of them are becoming friends and so so i think it, it's uh there's a there's a sense of solidarity and a sense of pride and a sense of accomplishment that you gain from being individuals that people usually don't anticipate and 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 are happy to find that once they finally must have the courage to do it that that, that happens with them well, one of my favorite pictures is the the two pictures side by side of the pig with his nose out the truck and the and the dog with his head out the window. So, yes. yeah. So people kind of have to to realize that both are the same. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. That's one of the big obstacles because they're. I mean, just the fact that they're in a truck lumped all together is a lot, sort of, mm-hmm. you know, renders them less personal, right? Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. Well, Michael, yeah. what uh, can people do other than, you know, attend your vigils? What what would you like the public to, to know? Well, uh, I mean, as far as, the, the, as far as the vigils, or as far as the save movement, the best thing you can do is, is attend vigils and, mm-hmm. and show your, and show your, Show your stance on the matter. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that hasn't happened yet, or I shouldn't say hasn't, it's, it's only happened to a small amount yet that, that we want to see, is we want vigils popping up in other places. Um, there is a Melbourne big save. There is, I believe, one in Indiana. 
Um, I know there's some interest about starting one somewhere in the Netherlands. So there have been there's been a little bit of of new save groups popping up, mm-hmm. but what we really want is to see it become a global movement. Um, and so if there's if, if there's anyone who's thinking that you know I'd love to do that, but I don't live anywhere near Toronto, mm-hmm. that doesn't matter because if you if you contact Anita, Anita through Facebook, um, she will be more than happy to, to to do anything she can to help you start one in your town or city. Um, well, oh my that's, God. that's what we'd like to see. Well, thank you. For, well, Michael, we have to stop there, but thank you so much for agreeing to be a guest on our show, and uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you again. My pleasure. Thank you, Leah. Dan. You're welcome.